Hey guys, finally got it up and working. Uh, you know, having a senior moment trying to get some of this stuff going, but it's working, so we're here. Um, so yeah, again, if you have any questions about the work from this week, how to access that work from this week, uh, that's what I'm here for today. I have a few things that I do want to talk about and address, just some general questions that I've been getting um, throughout the week, discussing things like RenWeb, how do I access documents, how do I upload documents, what type of documents should I be uploading, how should I be uploading them, things like that. And so uh, for this first section, I just kind of want to talk about that. Uh, seventh grade, I'm not going to be talking about the test on this live stream because there are some of you who still have not taken the test, at least last time I checked. So uh, if you have any questions about the test, We'll be discussing those in tomorrow's live stream at the same time. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So a lot of you guys have been having questions about RenWeb, the RenWeb lesson plans, where do I find my work, how do I upload work, things like that. Uh, I had made a video. If you have not watched the video, please go watch that video about RenWeb. And it talks about how to access the lesson plans and how to read the lesson plans, where to find the work. And for my lesson plans, uh, again, not everybody's lessons plans look the same. And so in that video, I go through and explain to you what those lesson plans uh, look like, what they mean. So like on my lesson plans, you'll see like one, two, three for each day or like one, two. And that's just like, numeric steps on how you should be doing the stuff. So number one, do that day's bell work question. Number two, do the assignment. And number three, you know, think about the assignment or something like that. Sometimes you'll see like, so the assignment's here and it's gonna be indented over here and you'll see like A or something like that. What that's referring to is simply, uh, it's giving you more information about what to expect, what to see there. For example, I know you guys probably can't see that, but so like no one complete bell work. A, make sure uh, to use the bell work paper. So again, that indentation is just giving you some information about number one. So that's what that's explained. Then number two would be the next thing you do, number three, so on and so forth. This is a PDF of the entire week. All right, so you have that PDF of the entire week, everything that you will need to do. You can go through day by day on RenWeb, but also know that if you log on to RenWeb, look through the lesson plan for Monday, you will find that schedule. Every single Monday, I will put that schedule on there as a PDF. Another uh, thing, speaking of PDFs and assignments, that's another thing that seems to be an issue is where to find those assignments, where to find those documents. The documents are going to be found for each day at the bottom of that day's lesson. So if you're scrolling through RenWeb and uh, you're going through all my instructions on what my lesson plan says, at the bottom it's going to say supplemental document. Those supplemental documents are the assignments. Those supplemental documents are just that. They're the extra documents. Sometimes they might be notes. Sometimes they might be Google Slides. But that's what those supplemental documents are. And again, some of you have still had issues, and I am uh, more than happy to send you those PDFs through Remind when you can't find them. But just to let you know, that's where those are. That's where they're going to be every single Monday. And again, you probably won't see my lesson plans till about Monday. And the reason for that is I want you guys to rest during the weekend. I want you to try and worry about schoolwork, uh, including this weekend. All right, we had this nice long weekend, even though we're out of school and it might not feel like a day off of school, you still need to treat it as a day off of school. Take some time just to reflect on what Good Friday actually means, uh, what Easter is, take some time with your family. But again, don't worry about schoolwork this weekend. That's why another reason why we push the due dates. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Moving back to uh, the assignments and things like that. Where do I find these assignments? Again, they're going to be those supplemental documents. And so uh, the schedule is always going to be on Monday's documents. And also will your bell work? Uh, that's another question I've had a lot is how do I do the weekly bell work? 
the or daily bell work. I have gone ahead, and this is going to be continuous throughout the rest of the time that we're doing this. You will have a bell work paper for the entire week. On that bell work paper, it will have either one or two questions per day that you need to answer. You could answer all those questions at once, or you can answer them day by day and then send it to me. Uh, but either way, because it starts on Monday, that's where you will find bell work is on Monday's assignments. And so for some of you guys, like in anatomy, there were uh, there was an article that you guys had to start reading today on the physical death of Jesus Christ. That article would not be found on Monday's lesson plan. It would be found on Wednesday's lesson plan because Wednesday is the day that you start that assignment. So I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Another uh, thing is that I've tried to do is so like for that same assignment on the death of Jesus Christ, you're doing it today and tomorrow. And so I've decided to just put it on both days. So you'll find the document there either on Wednesday or Thursday. Um, and uh, speaking of assignments, again, a lot of you guys, and this again was uh, in part my fault. We're all learning this process together, but some of you guys have been confused about what assignments do you need to turn in? What assignments do you need to take pictures of and upload either to RenWeb or uh, to Remind or to email? And again, when you're uploading, please, if you can upload it to RenWeb, that's just gonna make it a lot easier for uh, me and I know all your other teachers having all your assignments in that one place where we can find them. So if you have access to RenWeb, please upload them there. But again, what assignments should you be uploading? Well, in the lesson plans, I explain what assignments you'll be getting. And I also try to explain uh, like what they'll be worth. And if it's not clear enough in the daily lessons, again, download the PDF of the lesson because at the very end of that PDF, at the very end of the week, you're going to find this. All right, assignments due by Saturday, April 11th. Again, that's changed. They're not due this Saturday. They're due Tuesday. But nonetheless, every week at the end of this little PDF document, you're going to find those assignments that are due. And that tells you every single thing that you need to turn in. So you can just use that as a checklist. Uh, I'm showing you anatomy right now, but this goes for biology, goes for life science. Uh, it goes for all of my classes. So if you're ever in doubt, what should I be taking pictures of to send to Mr. Eversol? Look right here. The guided notes that you guys have when we're uh, when I'm doing my lectures on YouTube and you guys are following along with your notes like we normally would in class, I don't ever ask you guys to turn those notes in in class, and I'm not asking you guys to turn them in here. So you don't need to take pictures of those notes. Uh, there will be exceptions from time to time where, like anatomy, you guys had those questions last week that I wanted you to turn in. Uh, biology, there might be one from time to time. And life science, we generally don't have the guided notes. When we do, though, uh, it's the same principle. And so, again, when I have you guys do those guided notes, that's for your benefit for when you are doing an assignment or even sometimes a test. Uh, because, again, the test Life science, biology, this week your test is open book and open notebook, uh, or like your open notes and open book, open notebook. And so you can use those notes there. The notes are just a way to get that information in a structured order. And so again, you don't need to turn in those notes, but those notes are there to help you have all that information in a orderly way. Uh, and so again, I'm gonna see. Okay, so so far no actual questions. Again, uh, in the chat, remember all this is being like recorded to where it's saved like as a, a history thing. And so uh, there's nothing on here right now, but I'm just saying in advance, please keep it appropriate. Don't put anything on there. This is just for, again, the reason I have the chat on is so you can ask questions. Uh, so just food for thought for you. Uh, so again, the assignments, I told you where you can find them. I told you where you can see what's due. However, some of you are still having issues with actually accessing the assignment. 
Some of you guys can't open it if it's a PDF. Some of you guys can't open it if it's a Word document. From now on, I'm going to try and just do like a Hail Mary and put it out there in like three different ways. I'm going to try and put some, uh, put it as a PDF, put it as a Word document, and as a Google Doc. In all honesty, I totally prefer Google Docs. I like the PDF because it's just there and the format doesn't change no matter what you're looking at it on. But if you're trying to, let's say, edit the assignment and change it, if it goes from a Word document and then you put that Word document in Google Docs, it changes everything and it makes it all convoluted and confusing. So I'm going to try and just put Word document, Google Doc, and uh the PDF. So don't be surprised when you look next week in the assignments and you're going to see three assignments that say the exact same thing, but just look at what type of format they are because you're going to see PDF, Word doc, and probably a Google doc or somehow to get the Google doc on there. Again, you guys know that I use Google Suites very heavily in my class. I love using Google Slides. I love using the Google doc which is their type of word. And uh, so that would be the best option for you as well, because that's the other thing, it's free. If you don't have Word uh, or Microsoft Office, Microsoft Office is a paid program. And so if you don't have it, you can't access those documents unless it's in Google Docs. If you have a Gmail account, Google Suites is absolutely free, at least for Google Docs and Google Slides, which is, again, what we utilize mainly in this class. Uh, likewise, from now on, we'll be using Google for uh, doing our testing, what's known as Google Forms. Seventh grade, you guys have already done an awesome job on that. You guys have started your test on that today. I was going to do it through, uh, RenWeb has a test version, a web test, but this just seemed like a easier, simpler option to do it through the Google Form. Uh, ninth grade, that's why I needed your, or biology, that's why I needed your uh, emails. And so tomorrow I can send you that link and it's going to be super easy because all the questions will be there and you just submit the assignment and it will help with grading as well. And uh, unless there's like a short answer and then it will help me get your grade back to you as soon as possible. That's why seventh grade, some of you have asked, tomorrow at the latest, you should be able to see what you got on your test. So that's what's going on. Let's see. Uh, oh, I just answered. Uh, yes, Haley, uh, yours is actually the one I did get to so far. You did a good job. You guys will be able to see that again later. So good job. Um, let's see. I really like that video we watched and took notes in. It was cool. What video was that? Because there were a lot of them. <laughs> Google Ducks. Okay, the missing link. So this is for biology. Uh, yeah, thank you for asking that, Kaylee. Uh, if you guys didn't see, I sent you all a document that had resources, and I tried to explain it typing it out for you guys, what the evolutionary tree of life is, what the fossil record is, and what common ancestors and missing links are. And so uh, if you're still confused though, let's just talk about that real quick. Your missing links, um, trying to see if I have anything around that could work as our quote unquote chain. Ah, I know what we're going to do. All right, so uh, I don't have a chain per se, but let's assume that these Expo markers are our family tree, our evolutionary tree, all right? So orange marker is going to be the simplest organism ever, all right? It's the single-celled organism. And one day it's going to give rise to, let's say, a multi-celled organism. Still very simple, but it's the next link in the chain, all right? That multi-celled organism is going to give rise to something that looks like, oh, that's the wrong marker. Something that looks like a plant. So that's our next link in the chain. Maybe that plant-like organism. Again, this is not the way that evolutionists say that it 
uh, the evolutionary process took place. But none of the way, let's just assume. So again, these things are going from simple to complex. And let's just assume all the way after all these millions, millions of years, we have us at the very top of this evolutionary tree. All right. All of these markers are representing the common ancestors to us up here at the top. However, let's just look at this one. Our most common or our most recent common ancestor, there really is no fossil record for it. And so it's not there when we're talking about our evolutionary ancestry. We assume or scientists would assume that that organism is there that we just haven't found it yet. And so that's why it's considered a missing link because without it, you're missing a link in the chain. And so again, this was our common ancestor, or again, according to them, it's our common ancestor, but because we haven't found it, it's missing. So it's a missing link in the chain. And that's another problem with these evolutionary trees is they try and show, look at the history of life, look at all of our common ancestors. However, they don't really show any common ancestors. They show organisms that look similar to each other. And because they look similar, have similar morphologies, similar genetics, they assume they must have a common ancestor. But because they've never found that common ancestor, we call them a missing link. I hope that helps explain it a little bit better. Uh, let's see. Are we still going to do Latin quizzes? At this time, I have not figured out a way to do Latin quizzes, so you guys are lucky. Because in all honesty, I could give you a Latin quiz and say, what are these 10 Latin terms? And, oh, look, I have the Latin words right here. So that's why I haven't done it. If I do start doing Latin quizzes again, which I doubt I will simply because of the structure of our school right now. But if I were to do Latin quizzes again, they would be structured in a more detailed way. So what I mean by that is this word is isopod. What do the Latin roots in the word isopod refer to? Iso means equal, pod means foot. So they have equal sized feet or legs, right? It would be a quiz like that. And I know you guys don't want that. So we're probably not going to do that, at least not this year. All right. Um, uh, the one with the plants, was that the uh, eyewitness one that I had you guys watch the other day as your documentary? That was an interesting one. The documentary one, I say it now. Yeah, I'm a huge nerd, and so I love documentaries, and sometimes I'll just veg out on YouTube watching documentaries. I found a really interesting one about dragonflies we might do. All right. Um, and so, again, any other questions? Anatomy, do you guys have any questions about uh, your work? Hello. Um, about maybe the work that you had this week or still working on things from last week. Again, last week's work, please get it to me as soon as possible. Uh, but just know that we're, we're all working in this together. Uh, don't stress about this. And I guess I, I've kind of given my two cents about what I really wanted to say, what I thought were the frequently asked questions this week. One moment while I turn on the lights. All right, uh, I've given my two cents about like what I see as being the frequently asked questions this week. Uh, a few other things I did want to address in this video though, were just simply that one, I am extremely proud of you guys. And like, I really mean that. The work that you have put in these last two weeks has just been amazing. Yesterday, I was like honestly really excited and I was even talking with uh, Mr. Thomas about letting him know just how yesterday seemed, I don't know if it was for you, but for me, it seemed a lot more streamlined than any day so far throughout this entire process. And today has been very similar. And what that's showing me is that we're starting to get it. We're starting to find a structure that works and we're starting to find this method that we can all understand. And by the end of this process, we should be getting through this so easily uh, that 
it's just almost like normal school in the fact of how mundane it is. And I just, again, want to tell you guys how proud I am of you because you have done such a good job at taking this situation. And I know how stressful it's been for you. It's been stressful for us too. But you have done so well at taking what's thrown at you and juggling it with everything else that's been coming at you. And we're starting to get to this point where I think we're leveling out and we're able to understand what's going on and we're just getting better at it. And I know it's only going to get better from here. So thank you guys. Um, how does the test work? Um, did you get the link this morning? Again, seventh grade, I sent you guys a link and uh, it'll be a little bit different the next time we do a test because uh, there will be some timing software involved. But again, there was a link that's on RenWeb. So for seventh grade, for your test today, there is a link on RenWeb uh, in today's lesson and also in the homework section on RenWeb. Also, if you scroll through your Remind notifications, there was an announcement that went out this morning that had the link. Uh, what would plants look like with the with eyes, legs, and arms? Probably like what you see in Plants vs. Zombies or uh, Cuphead, I assume. I don't understand question 28 on the review. I don't have the review right in front of me. Could you uh, say what the question is? I'm going to try and check it right now. Is it about the long day? No, because it's got to be an evolution question if it's 28. <laughs> yeah, Corona time is a struggle. Because I know video games. That's how I know what Cuphead is. I was excited when it was coming out. I haven't played it, but I thought it was cool they were using 2D animation. Uh, do you think like 10 years, the corona will just be part of our virus life? Or do you think it will be abolished? That's a good question. And I think like uh, if you guys have been watching just about every day around 530, Donald Trump comes out and he does a huge press conference and then he answers questions. But he also has his medical advisors there, including uh, Dr. Fauci. And they talk about these things with the viruses and they assume within the coming years, it will be like the flu, which is influenza, where we have, you know, flu season, where every year around a certain time, we get these, uh, these flus that come out. And yes, a lot of people die from it. But at the same time, a lot of people get it, and they are still okay. There is a whole science about it. It's, it's confusing to think about because we think, well, so many more people are dying from the flu than Corona. But it's not the numbers that you have to look at. It's the percentages. In other words, it's like 0.5 or 0.6% of people who get the flu die from the flu, which just goes to show you how many people get the flu. Whereas with Corona, the numbers have been more like 1%. And I know 1% doesn't sound like a lot, but when we're talking about thousands and millions of people, that's quite a bit more. It's literally double the amount as the flu. So that's why it's so dangerous right now. But as we see people starting to uh, recover from corona, their bodies are developing anti uh, antibodies against it. In other words, their immune system now can recognize corona. So when somebody's infected with corona again, they can attack it. And so that's why, again, with influenza, when it comes around each year, we're able to recover a lot quicker because our bodies have been exposed to it before. We've never been to exposed to corona until now. And so that's why it's such a dangerous threat. That's why I'm in my classroom alone right now. That's why we're all practicing the social distancing because it's something our bodies have never come into contact with. Within the coming years, as our bodies get used to these things, uh, yeah, we'll probably start to develop some more immunities to it. and It'll just be like our flu season. Uh, what is the problem with the evolutionary family trees? Oh, okay. Uh is that I'm assuming that's question 28. So for biology, on your review that you had Monday, question 28 asks, what is the problem with evolutionary family trees? The question itself is very similar to Kaylee's question she was asking earlier about the missing links. 
the evolutionary trees, uh, what they show or what they try to show is how all living things are related by one common ancestor, the universal common ancestor. Uh, I forget the term. There's a term like LUCA or something like that, but it's an acronym for the common ancestor uh, or the last the last universal common ancestor. That's it, LUCA. And so again, they have this one little dot and then everything branches out from it on these evolutionary trees. And they show, look, see how uh, all primates and humans came from one lineage. All rodents came from another lineage, but all rodents and primates because their mammals came from the same lineage. And so it tries to, uh, it tries to show how everything is supposedly related to these common ancestors. However, a lot of these common ancestors are missing links. In other words, we don't have them in the fossil record. Now, some excuses try and say that, well, of course we're not going to find them in the com in the uh, fossil record because some of them just won't have common ancestors. And what they mean by that is it evolution should be a progressive process where it will jump, where all of a sudden you do have something that's radically different. And that's one way that they try and distinguish that. But again, the evolutionary trees don't necessarily show validated science. They show more hypothetical science. In other words, this is what we assume it should look like, but we really have no idea. And that's also why, if you remember when you watched the debate, Ken Ham talked about the orchard of life instead of the tree of life. Because we would still say that animals can adapt, but they're still going to stay that same type of animal. So like Darwin's finches, you could have one finch species and it probably did adapt into all those different species that we see on the Galapagos. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they were still a finch. They didn't turn into a new type of organism. And so Ken Ham would propose the orchid tree of life. Just facilities coming in. Uh, I, I hope that kind of helps answer it. Again, you can look to that document that I sent you guys for more information on that one. <laughs> yeah, 2020, when you think 2020 can't get worse. 2020 is also the year that parts of Terminator happened. So yeah, watch out for your computers. Uh, do you think we will have corona shots? That's a strong possibility. What they're doing right now, I think, is more so looking at maybe uh, antibiotics that are going to deal with the antibodies themselves. So that's another reason right now they're saying that they really need people donating blood, especially if you have had coronavirus and that coronavirus has, if you've healed from coronavirus, because that means now within your blood, you have antibodies to fight coronavirus. And so donating that blood is so important because you have the key to defeating corona in your blood already. Hey, Joey. When do we turn in our work? If you're done with it, you can turn it in now. You can just upload it to the RenWeb Dropbox for homework. And again, the tricky thing with that is let's say you go to my classroom, you see my homework, and you upload an assignment to the homework Dropbox, but then you want to upload another one. Well, even though you went into my class, for whatever reason, RenWeb is going to refresh it and send you back to whatever your first period is. It's either first period or alphabetical. I think it's first period, though. And so you need to be aware of that each time you're uploading a document. I think I just posted it on Remind or emailed it. For the time being, that's fine too if you're emailing it or sending it through Remind. Uh, but again, if we can get to where you're sending all your stuff through Remind or through RenWeb, that's going to make all of our lives a lot easier for grading things. Yeah, we can do a class Zoom. Uh, again, I've been hearing a lot of response about that. Uh, uh, you guys know stepdad, you guys call him stepdad, Mr. Pocan, who came in for doing our uh, student shadowing. He did a lesson through Zoom yesterday, and he invited me to that, and that was my first time using it, and that was really cool. So we'll definitely be doing some Zoom stuff, uh, not this week, but maybe next week we'll start getting into that, where uh, on Wednesdays we'll do Zoom, Fridays we'll do Google 
our YouTube live. So something like that. Are there more evolutionists or Christians? That is a good question. Um, and it's kind of a tricky question because sometimes you do have Christians who are evolutionists. Remember, we talked about uh, theistic evolution, theistic referring to God, evolution referring to evolution as the process that God used to create life. So um, there, there are some tricky things with that. But we also talked about some of the, the problems with uh, Christian evolution in some cases would be like uh, when it talks about in Romans 5.12, for since one man's sin, death entered the world. Well, if you're going to say that God used evolution to create, how did all this stuff happen? Hey, how Good. How are you doing? Miss Jennifer, one of the people who cleans our classroom, uh, just came in doing a, a YouTube live for my students. <laughs> So I'll get that trash later because that's got some nasty stuff in it. So you don't need to get that. So thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to clean some of this stuff up for you. So don't worry about that. All right. righty. See you later. All right. All right. Um, so again, uh, going back to what we we're talking about with Romans, uh, some people will say, how can you have all this? death and destruction in the world before humans are created or evolve if it was humans that brought death into the world. So that's the big problem with theistic evolution right there for a lot of people. Also, uh, some people say it just limits God to what he can do. Why would God limit himself to working into the realms of, you know, the physical universe? That's just another idea. Uh, I believe they're turned in, Joey. I have not... Uh, check them all yet, but I have been seeing that you've been sending me your emails. I just haven't been able to respond to them yet. Yep. Catch you on the flippity flip. Question mark. How the snake boys doing? They're doing good. Um, Yep, they're doing good. Fed some of them the other day, and uh, they're hungry. I know. Yeah, I don't know. Who. So, um, let's see. So, I mean, I've kind of given my two cents about what I needed. If you guys have any other questions, let me know, because I'm still here for like the next half hour, or at least you know, 25-ish minutes. Uh, again, if you don't finish your work this week, don't work on it over the weekend. Take this weekend off because uh, I know that I'm going to be. Now, I mean, I'll probably be doing some grades and stuff this weekend, but if you try and get a hold of me over this weekend, uh, I'll try and respond to you as soon as possible, but we should all be just taking some time off to just kind of rest, relax, recoup, and uh, you should do the same. So again, your assignments, if you don't get done by tomorrow, don't worry about it Friday. Don't worry about it Saturday. Don't worry about it Sunday. You know, you'll have some time on Monday, Tuesday to work on it uh, because you need to rest this weekend. That doesn't mean leave all your stuff till Monday, but just, you know, if you don't get done with it, don't stress about it. And again, I've heard so many people uh, or I can tell just in the way that you guys email me and things like that. I know we're all just kind of overwhelmed with everything right now. And the last thing any of us want for you to do is stress about this right now. And again, I know it's one thing to say, don't stress about it. You know, it's another thing to really actually not stress about it, but just do your best, you know, uh, to not stress about it because, I'm trying not to stress about it. And so what I'm trying to say is just, you know, if you didn't get something in on the Saturday or the Monday that it's due, don't freak out, all right? Still try and get it to me as soon as possible, uh, but you don't need to be stressed. Let's see. 
What's my favorite book of the Bible? Oh, that's a, my favorite gospel is John. I love the way that John is just so poetic with how he shows who Jesus is and uh, the love and compassion that comes out of Jesus from the gospel of John, and especially in the passion narrative. And when I say the passion narrative, if you looked on the lesson plans on Friday, I said, maybe you should read the passion narrative because that's what Good Friday is about is when Jesus went to the cross to die. And that's the passion narrative. And uh, the prayer that Jesus has when he's talking to the disciples at the last supper and when he goes to the garden in John, it's just so beautifully written. You can truly see the love of God and the savior in the gospel of John. And so that's probably my favorite gospel. Um, I really enjoy the Psalms. Romans is a good book. Romans was excellent. I like really did a study on that this year. I've uh, been doing Hebrews as well. And Genesis. Genesis is a really fun book to look through. How did the coronavirus start? I've heard a lot of different answers. So the first thing that I heard about coronavirus was that, um, uh, well, one of the first things that I heard about it was that it actually came from snakes because they were people would eat snakes and people do eat snakes. I've eaten snake, uh, but it's uh, they were saying how like from the wet markets again in China and wet markets just means like, you know, the seafood where they're going to sell all these like sometimes live animals, sometimes dead animals. Uh, that's a wet market. And the virus itself was supposedly in one of these animals. And at first they thought it might have been a snake. But after doing other studies, they have found out that it actually most likely came from a bat. And there's other stories or rumors about different. But the one that I've heard most commonly is that it came from a bat. Somebody ate the bat that had this virus. They got the virus because they had never been exposed to this virus. They got really sick from it and spread that exponentially. Uh, the bat was probably okay with the virus because it was something that was in their system for a long time. And uh, there is a uh, really good Ted Ed video about uh, vaccines and why vaccines are important. And what it talks about is smallpox and how smallpox just spread exponentially, especially here in America when European settlers came over because the Native Americans had never been exposed to it. And so when these Europeans who, you know, had smallpox or had recovered from smallpox came over and were all of a sudden sharing things like blankets and different things with these Native Americans that had the smallpox virus on it, then these Native Americans were getting it. And that's what wiped out a lot of the Native American populations. And so viruses can be very dangerous, but there's also ways that we can prevent and help stop those. And one of those is vaccines. Um, another thing about the coronavirus. So we assume that it came from a bat. And uh, that also reminded me this weekend or uh, this week. Let me see what was that. I had taken a picture of it that uh, when I was doing my uh, classification video for biology and we were talking about how bats and birds, you know, they're not the same thing, but sometimes they're classified the same as according to Aristotle, but also according uh, in Leviticus, uh, bats were sometimes were classified as a, they're considered a bird. And what that means is not that they're actually a bird, but just that they fly. But when it gets translated in English, it's a bird. All right, but here's what it says about bats in uh, Leviticus. These are the birds you are to regard as unclean and not eat because they are unclean. The eagle, the vulture, the black vulture, the red kite, any kind of black kite, and even or and kind of raven, the horned owl, the screech owl, the gull, any kind of hawk, the little owl, the cormorant, the great owl, the white owl, the desert owl, the osprey, the stork, any kind of heron, uh, the hope, the hopo, and the bat. Right there in Leviticus 11, 13 through 19 in the Bible, God tells the Israelites, bats are unclean, don't eat them. And so there you have it, straight from the Bible. So, uh, yeah. Let's see. Mr. Eversoll, tell us a story about your favorite vacation you went on. Uh, my favorite vacation. 
Oh, gosh. I don't know. That'd be a hard one. Probably one of my favorites was my trip to the Grand Canyon or to Arizona with my two best friends. Uh, and I've told you guys that story before where we went to the Grand Canyon and uh, I was not in any physical shape to actually hike the Grand Canyon, but nonetheless, we did. Long story short, two days in, I almost, I had really bad heat exhaustion, almost to the point of like heat stroke. And uh, we were too far from a water source. And so we had to either push through to get to the water source or start making our way back to where we had more water. And by the grace of God, there was like this big puddle there that we were able to get enough water from to make it back. And so uh, that was one of my favorite vacations. Another one was actually two years ago. Uh, when I took a solo trip up to the Smoky Mountains, I absolutely love the Smoky Mountains. Uh, it's like one of my go-to destinations now, but, uh, I was there by myself on this trip and, uh, uh, I was going to this place called the Lost Sea in Tennessee. And it's this underground, uh, cave system that has one of the largest underground lakes in the United States. And it's a place that my parents took me to when I was really little. And so I wanted to go back. And so I went back there and uh, there were these two older couples who were also from Florida. And we got talking and uh, they let me hang out with them for the day. And they called me their adopted grandson and I called them my grandparents. And uh, yeah, it was fun. So there's a story for my favorite vacation. How old are you? Old enough. When is your birthday? September 5th. Yeah, I like the beach too. You just ate a bat. I don't want to call a doctor. Luckily, we're no longer under the law though, but saved through grace. So thank you, Jesus. I just saw your candy thing. <laughs> um, so again, any other questions about your assignments this week or what to expect in the coming weeks? Now's the time to ask. Uh, I'm trying to make my schedules to where they are as structured as possible in the sense of like, what you do on Monday is going to be the same every Monday. What you do on Tuesday is going to be the same every Tuesday, so on and so forth. So maybe Monday might be, watch this video, give me a summary about it every Monday. And uh, maybe Fridays are going to be, you know, assessment days where uh, click on this link, take the quiz, something like that. And so, again, trying to make it as streamlined as possible. That way you don't have to keep asking questions and by the this you're going to know okay i know exactly what to do i don't even need any help that's our goal is to get you to that point mind you we're always here for that help but you know who's my favorite person in the bible oh gosh that's a good one um well <laughs> i mean you know uh we, we could go with jesus and god or god in general uh, non God people who would be my favorite character. Uh, Noah's Ark has always been one of my favorite stories, but uh, I would have to go with probably the Apostle John or Peter um, or Paul. I feel like I relate to all of them in different ways. Uh, I, I like John's passion. Sometimes I feel... Peter's uh, uh, quick temperedness and ability to run into situations. And sometimes I feel like I'm Paul trying to explain something and nobody understands what I'm talking about. Uh, so um, there's that one. Let's see. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not a big anime fan. There's a few that I've watched. Uh, but I'm not big on anime. What is the chance of no school for the rest of the year? Um, I honestly don't know. 
I don't want to speak for anybody, but at the same time, you know, they're, they're estimating that Florida is going to hit its peak of cases. So in other words, looking at that graph where they show like the plateau, where it goes up like that, they're expecting us to be about right here at the highest point around May 1st. And so that's also when we're supposed to go back to school. And so I don't know, that could change, but that's what the models are showing right now. I have seen My Hero Academia. That one wasn't too bad, or at least one episode of it. Or maybe it was One Punch Man. I think it was One Punch Man. So um, let's see what time is it. Uh, Three fifty. We got about another five, or I mean, ten minutes on here. That we'll be doing again. Not sponsored, but I got my diet Dr Pepper again today. So help him keep me hydrated. Uh, I I am curious though. So like for those of you five who are here right now, um. What, how have you felt about this week? Has this week been a little bit easier than last week in the sense of being able to understand what's expected, where to find your stuff? Has it been more complicated? Are you starting to get the hang of RenWeb about three days into this now? Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Go ahead and put it in the comments if you like, no, you know, just, hey, this is how I've been feeling about this week. I want to know. That's also why I put that as your bellwork question Monday. What's your favorite thing on Netflix? Uh, I like Nailed It. I like watching that one. That one's fun. Uh, but probably my all-time favorite show is The Office. Like, that's my go-to. What are your stay-at-home plans for quarantine? Cleaning. Uh, a lot of cleaning. Um, the, the spare bedroom at uh, our house is going to be like my studio you could say for where i'll be doing like more of my youtube videos and we'll be doing some live streams in there and i'm in the process of getting all that situated to do that and so getting all that prepared just getting caught up on things around the house cleaning out my car whatnot while when i'm not talking to you guys on like remind or getting other stuff set up that's what i'm doing in my spare time right now uh and here, of course, you know, cleaning out all the cages, getting everything ready, and uh, hopefully making some new cages. I've got lots of ideas, so hopefully doing some of that. Yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, it's been hard and stressful. Um, we're trying to make it easier. And uh, that's why we're trying to streamline it with, like, I know we're using Remind, we're using email, we're using RenWeb. And that's why we're trying to streamline it just to RenWeb in the sense of like upload all your documents to RenWeb. You'll see all your assignments in RenWeb. You'll see the lesson plans in RenWeb. RenWeb, RenWeb, RenWeb. The reason we're doing that is we're trying to make it more streamlined. We're trying to make it less complicated. Hopefully within like the next two weeks, Remind should just be for, you know, updates, notifications, things like that. And everything else should be going through either Remind or if you still have to, email. But hopefully Remind or RenWeb by that point. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I put a lot on you guys last week. And I'm proud of what you were able to accomplish with that. What's my favorite dinosaur? Oh, um... I mean, it's cliche, but I could say Tyrannosaurus Rex, but I really don't know. I used to love like long neck dinosaurs, like Land Before Time was my show. And so like those sauropods, that was, that was my show. Or any prehistoric creature. Uh, I mean, our state fossil is the Smilodon, the saber tooth. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Glyptodons are also cool. Those are like the the armadillos that you see in Ice Age. Um, oh, okay, no, my all time favorite though prehistoric like animal. One of them is the Titanus wallery, which is the scientific name. Biology, you guys should catch that scientific 
Titanus, the genus, Wallery, the uh, species, which is the terror lizard, or, or the, not the terror lizard, uh, the, uh, I forget what the Latin translates to, but it's basically like a giant meat-eating chicken that like stood six feet tall. So cool. And we had them living here in Florida. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. There's something else I was going to say, but you know, my train of thought. Trains left the station. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask about. Uh, for you guys who have taken the test so far today, seventh grade, what did you guys think about the format? I personally find it very streamlined and easy, and especially for grading, and it's great because it shows me, you know, what questions everybody gets uh, confused on, so I understand, okay, this was probably not a good question, we can throw that one out, or it lets me see, okay, everybody clearly understands this concept, and so for me as a teacher, it is an excellent source for doing assessment, but how did it work for you guys? Was it okay? Did the link work? Were you able to answer the questions okay? Was the time enough? Again, if you guys actually noticed, your test really wasn't even timed this time. It will be in the future. Uh, those are some kinks I'm still trying to work out. But nonetheless, you got lucky. There was no time today on your test. So, uh, but again, just 75 minutes, an hour and 15 minutes, does that seem like uh, enough time to do it when you're going through your text and your notes looking for all the answers? Okay, uh, you might not know... But why is our Bible work coming up for Mr. Winter instead of Mr. Knapp? Okay, so not my class, but I can answer this for you guys. So if you're wondering about your Bible, why is it that you're talking to Mr. Knapp? Or why is it that you're talking to Mr. Winters? So for this whole process, because like, you know, crazy right now, again, streamline, streamline, streamline. We're trying to streamline everything. So all of middle school Bible is being done with Mr. Winter while all of high school Bible is being done with Mr. Knapp. And that just kind of helps streamline the process. And that way, like seventh grade and all the other middle schools are on the same page and all the other high schools are on the same page. That's why. Oh yeah, they did. I was like, who ate horses? But yeah, talking about the giant terror birds. Yeah. Okay, so loved it. You mean you loved the assessment? Uh, because that's good, because I really enjoy those too. Uh, it was easy. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, not too easy, but, you know, in the sense that if you knew your information, you knew where to find it, it should have been easy. Okay, good. Yeah, so we're going to stick to this uh, layout of the test from now on. Even probably if we do come back to school and we have to take other tests, I'm probably going to be giving them from now on through Google Forms because it's easier. Uh, it, it's just, I love it. It's an excellent tool. And also for you guys, it's going to allow me to get your you feedback a lot faster. And you guys know that's been a struggle before. <laughs> What's your favorite movie? Uh, prob well, I mean, like, you know, I could say Star Wars is like one of my favorites, but probably classic like all-time favorite movie it's probably what i could consider what got me interested in science and science fiction from like a very young age would be walt disney's Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea the old one from 1955 just absolutely amazing uh still holds up today a favorite animated movie would be lion king hands down So it's getting close to our time. Uh, just a little bit more time for a few last minute questions, if you got them. If not, uh, I hope to see you guys real soon. And again, next week we'll be doing a Zoom, probably on Wednesday at this time. So next week we'll go to Zoom on Wednesday, YouTube Live on Friday. And uh, remember, there's not going to be a YouTube Live this Friday. Uh, instead, it's going to be tomorrow because we don't have school this Friday. And so, again, expect like a live stream, whether it's through Zoom or YouTube Live every Wednesday and Friday, excluding this week. Because, again, weird schedule this week, but that's why. What's your favorite brand of shoes? The cheap ones. Uh, I, I shop cheap shoes, but...
probably, I mean, I used to have a pair of Adidas I really loved. Yeah, that's why it got so dark. It's because the Grim Reaper. Uh, you're welcome, Joey. Thanks for dropping in and uh, stopping by. So before uh, I end our live stream today, uh, I do just gonna I'm gonna pray for you guys. Uh, and again, if you guys ever have prayer requests, uh, lights are going off. It's telling us it's time to end this. But if you guys ever have prayer requests, you know just message me through your mind. Just be like, hey, Mr. Eversoul, uh, really stressed out this week. Could you just pray for me? Or, hey, Mr. Eversoul, you know, our family's going through this. Could you pray for me? And uh, I will be more than happy to do that for you guys. And so a uh, uh, collab fortnight with Goodman. Um, yes, I love archaeology too. Uh, for a while there, I thought about being a history teacher, but uh, I like science. So, um, all right, so we're going to pray real quick, so, and then we'll close. So, dear Heavenly Father, just thank you for today. I thank you for this opportunity and this technology that allows me to be able to communicate and talk with my students. I thank you, Father, for all their hard work and their perseverance, and I pray, Lord, that you calm their spirits, Lord. I pray that you help them to feel your peace and to know that you're there. Lord, just pray that you be with us this week. And this weekend, Lord, as we remember what you did on that cross and what that sacrifice was and that you rose on the third day, Lord, that you might have the power over death and power over everything else that might try and hinder us in this life. And I pray, Lord, that you just help these students as they're dealing with this coronavirus, as they're dealing with their schoolwork, Lord, that you help them to remember that you're there and that you're there for them. Lord, let us have a good day today. Let these students just have a good time and a good rest of their week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. <laughs> Talking while praying. All right. Well, uh, I love you guys, and I will talk to you guys later. All right. I'm going to sign off now. See you later.